Grab your tissues, get your cameras ready. Everyone, we're going to a wedding right now. That's right, right now. Get ready for a wedding. Shh, be quiet as we welcome the bride and the groom. Dearly beloved, we're gathered here together to join this couple in holy matrimony. Faith, do you take hope to be your dearly beloved as long as you both shall exist? Hope, do you take faith to be your dearly beloved as long as you both shall live? Wow, they both said yes. We've got a marriage. We've got a union of faith and hope coming together to create something amazing within our lives. And you witnessed it because this marriage is something that's called for in the journey of our day-to-day -day life. For it is something that is so amazing that for these two aspects of our spiritual life create and ignite the power of imagination. That's right. Your imagination. What a wonderful gift that you have and the ability to imagine, to dream, to visualize, to embrace these wonderful thoughts of what can be and what is available to us here and now. But how important it is that we understand for this imagination to be ignited, to move beyond just simple daydreaming and colorful thoughts in mind that say, oh, maybe, or wouldn't it be nice? But to ignite the power of imagination and to make it a spiritual work within your heart and life that is transforming, that is manifesting, that's unfolding your highest and best. It's so important. Have you brought together then hope, which is a feeling of expectation? Hope coming together with this wonderful expectation. I am expecting, I'm hoping, I am believing in this wonderful way that as full of expectation, something wonderful is, could, and may happen for my life. And then you marry it with faith. Faith, the substance of things I've hoped for. Faith, that assurance, that confidence that says, I know that I know that I know that I know. How wonderful that you put that together. The knowing and the exp ex expectation. You put it together and it ignites something wonderful. It's a marriage that brings about something fantastic. Oh, but will the marriage last? But will it last? Yes, it will. If they embrace the secret to a healthy marriage. There was a young man who came to a seminar on wedding ceremony, on marriage. And the coordinator of the seminar says, are those in this room who would like to speak about uh, how long they've been married and secrets to their success of their healthy marriage? The young man stood up. Hi, my name is Jerry. Yes, we've been married for a long time. We've been married for 50 some years and it's just been a wonderful experience. And uh, wow, the leader, gosh, this is just really powerful. You've been married a long time. What's the secret to your success of this kind of marriage? Well, he said, yeah, I, I, I try to treat her nice. Oh, okay, that's good. I buy her presents. Oh, nice. I take her on trips. In fact, he said, for our 25th wedding anniversary, I took her to the Bahamas. Oh, how special. Surely this is the secret to a lasting marriage. And he said, that's beautiful. You're a true inspiration. Tell me, maybe you can help us. What are you going to do celebrating for your 50th wedding anniversary? Well, he said, actually, I'm thinking about going back to the Bahamas and picking her up. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that the real secret to a happy marriage is not that. The secret to a healthy and happy marriage of these two of faith and hope coming together is this partnership. A partnership, a union. For this is what a marriage is when the two parts come together as one in an equal sharing with one another. How important it is that expectation is not overpowering faith and faith is not overpowering expectation, but the two walk hand in hand in this great journey of life. And so we find that this is what it's all about, that our faith is our confidence, our assurance, and our knowledge. With then that wonderful feeling of expectation, well, something amazing can unfold in imagination. Now we begin to imagination with pur imagine with purpose. 
It's not just driving down Interstate 85 looking at the sign of the lottery and thinking, wow, I imagine myself winning that. Wouldn't that be lovely? What would I do with it? I'd buy this, I'd buy that, I'd help this, I'd help that. I'd do this. You know, we think. We've all been there, haven't we? We've looked at that sign and it stimulates our imagination. But there's an imagination that is powerful waiting to be ignited within us that says it's not just a someday, it's a now. It's a, not just a someday or a maybe or a could be, or, but it's a now. And it becomes a reality as expectation and faith come together. Martin Luther King spoke of the wonderful speech saying, I have a dream. He cast a vision. He began to imagine what it might be like. This weekend, we're celebrating in a holiday experience this wonderful tribute to him of this message, this dream, this vision, this imagining that he had. How powerful it was because it transformed our world and it changed it. But I want to say that he began to paint what it would look like, but what was absent in the marriage was the groom. You know, the groom didn't show up on time. The groom wasn't there, left the bride at the altar. He spoke of the expectation, this is what I see. But what was missing was the faith that says, I see it now. I see it here. I see it in this moment. The expectation and the hope began to stir people. But could you imagine what it would be like if the groom had been there at the altar and the marriage of expectation and faith had come together that the imagination, the dream that he said, it's now, it starts today, this day, from here forward, we live this way, we see our world this way, and our vision is not just a someday dream, it's a now, it's a now experience. How transformational that can be when we engage this kind of imagination for our lives, because then it becomes creative. We know that God within us is a, such a power, and that we're all made in the likeness of image of God, correct? Look around. We've got the likeness and the image of God right here in this room. That's right. How powerful it is to acknowledge that on a regular basis. We sang, you are the face of God. You are the face of God. You're the revelation because the divine is within you. So what is this divine within us? What's it there for? Because the divine within us is this wonderful creative energy called imagination. Yes, that's right. For the divine is always imagining, visualizing in a creative way. One thing we know about spirituality and within our lives is constantly telling us that God is ever expanding. There's no limits to that which is of the divine. There doesn't come to an end. There doesn't come to say, oh, we've come to the limitations of uh, the boundaries and there's nothing more, nothing new. But in God, there's an ever expanding experience. It is ever creating. It is ongoing. It never stops. It never ceases. And so what we find then is this wonderful experience that when we know the God within, that imaginative power is ignited to say, let's dream, let's visualize. Who are we today? Who are we called to be? And who are we in this moment? And what is happening in this moment? For God, the all good, fills us with this feeling of the knowing of the all good and allows us then to imagine with the power to create something wonderful but here's our challenge. We don't often understand the power that we have in imagination, the creative power that we have. You know, we walk down this world. We walk through this world like the 85-year-old woman who's driving her 57 Chevy going down, and she's motoring down the freeway at 25 miles an hour. Grandson says, Grandma, Grandma, you know, we could go a little faster. Oh, no. My car goes 25 miles an hour. Oh, but Grandma, if you just push the pedal, it'll go a little bit more. What? What are you talking about? Suddenly the grandson says, Grandma, and pushes her leg down. And whoa, they take off. And say, whoa, I didn't know that we had this much power. I didn't know that we could go this fast. I didn't know that we could go motoring down the freeway at this kind of speed. Uh, you know, that's our lives. Because we've forgotten, or maybe don't realize, the amount of spiritual power we have when we ignite imagination through faith and hope coming together in our lives. How many of you have a laptop? How many have a computer? How many of you would like a computer? Okay, we're getting everybody involved here sooner or later. Uh, we're getting you all engaged in this. What, what we see is here, 
You have the access to the internet, don't you? Oh, but some say, you know, I've got a laptop, yes, but all I use it for is Facebook or occasional email. Do you realize you can Google just about anything? Do you realize you have at your fingertips a wealth of knowledge? And knowledge is power. But quite often we look at these laptops and we just use them for our social media engagements and we don't realize you have access to something that could bring all kinds of education to your life, transforming you. You don't realize the power at your fingertips. Wow, let's do some researching. Let's do some awakening of knowledge. So it is when we awaken to the understanding of the power of imagination within us. We often don't see the power because we are afraid to imagine ourselves greater. We kind of get in this little rut. They said, this is as good as it gets. Why imagine something greater? Because something greater just ain't going to probably happen for me. Because I hold on to the familiar, the tangible, the every day-to-day -day experience. And I look at it in the framework of my limitations. And that's our greatest mistake. A framework of limitations that we draw and create around the power of our imagination. So to begin with this wonderful experience of imagination, one must do this. And that is, first of all, know what you want. Because if you don't know what you want, you know, we can be imagining all kinds of things all over the world and all kinds of ideas out there. You know, I don't, maybe, I don't, you know, I don't know. And we know what it's like when we go out with someone and say, where would you like to go for dinner? Well, I don't know. Do you want Chinese? Mm, no. Italian? Oh, I'm not sure. Uh, how about Mexican? Oh, I just had that last night. I don't feel, no, no. Japanese? And, uh, you know, fast food, McDonald's, burger? I don't know. What? what? You know how frustrating that is when we don't know what we want? We've all been there. How many of you said you're one of the uh, culprits of that kind of conversation as well? Uh -huh. You don't know exactly what you want. So the power of imagination is underutilized because we have not been specific with what we want. We may have our faith in gear. We may have our hope ready. We may have brought this marriage together. We may have created this wonderful union. We may have connected this, but we I just don't know exactly what I want. So here's one of the problems. We forget that everything is available to us. We understand the passage of Scripture that says the Father has shared with us that all that is the Father, that Father has is thine. Everything is available to us. The prodigal son returning back home, realizing that as after his, all of his wanderings, he came back home to receive everything that the Father had was available to him. When we realize everything is available to us, it changes our choices, because now there's a plethora and we can choose knowing that we're not limited in any way. So we then must direct our thoughts, directing them in the way that we want to go. Imagine your desire over and over again. So I want you to hold it in visualization. This I believe for. I'm believing for my prosperity, believing for my healing, believing for guidance and direction, believing for a job. I'm believing for someone to come into my life that will love me. Whatever it may be that you're believing for, you hold it in your imagination and you begin to imagine it over and over again, giving it direction. For the use of imagination, we have to empower it with a, shall we say, a lifelike representation. So we visualize it. So what is it we're doing in imagination with faith? I visualize my healing. I visualize my prosperity. I see before me in the way that the wonderful things are, are, have unfolded for me and I live from that perspective. Connie, Joanne, headed off to Italy because they've already visualized it. They've taken the steps of living as if, making their plans for a trip this year. They're making every, putting everything in order. And they're doing so with the aspect as if they're living as if. Not, it's not a someday. We are going. We are going. Their trip is already unfolding for them. Although they're not in Italy now, they're already imagining themselves in Italy and all the locations and places they're going to that are unique and not touristic and going into unusual places. You see, we live then and think from the place of our knowing and our imagining and our dreaming. So you wake up in the morning and you dress for the job that you want, not the job that you may have, you know? 
So how many of you put on the tights, cape, and Superman t-shirt, knowing that that was the job you wanted and, uh, as you went off to work at Burger King? You know, whatever it may be, you see, it's this kind of thing that you will begin to imagine yourself in this context. You begin to see yourself in this way, and you live from that perspective for your imagination that has life, because what's behind it is an expectation that the job is there. A faith that says, I know it's here. I know that this is unfolding for me. And so as I visualize it, it becomes something powerful within my heart and my life. I mean, people say, wait a minute, is this really biblical? Is this really biblical? I say, yes, it is. Turn with me, if you would, in your mind's eye and listen closely to this passage from the Song of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 1. Ooh, Song of Solomon. People often look at that and think, wait a minute. Isn't that the spiritual erotica? You know, it's that love stuff going on where one is talking about the other's physical anatomy and how much I love that and how much... Oh, it, it has a lot of erotic message. It certainly wakes up Christians who have been saying, Ooh, Song of Solomon, Pastor, don't be preaching from that because, you know, I, I'm getting a little uh, caught up in the, in the experience there. It's more than just spiritual erotica. It is so symbolic as it describes for us the journey of our life. Yes, it gets your attention because it's framed in that kind of context where suddenly people listen up and start to pay attention. But what are you paying attention to? Let's look at Solomon, Song of Solomon, chapter 3. It says, night after night on my bed, I sought the one I love. I sought him. I rise now and go about the city in the streets and in the broadways. I seek him whom my soul loves. The watchman that goes about the city found me and I asked him, have you seen my soul's love? Scarcely a time had passed by when I found him whom my soul loves. I held him. I would not let him go. I brought him into my mother's home and into her bedchamber where I was born. I better stop there. It's getting a little hot, right? Move on to the last of that chapter. Now go forth, O ye daughters of Zion, and behold King Solomon, an example of the ultimate desire. The king with the crown of which his mother had crowned him on his wedding day, this day of joy in the heart. Now, let's break all that down. What is the example given to us? It's the example of one who is looking for the dream, the desire of her heart, her soul's love. And in the night, she begins to imagine, begins to dream. I encourage you, in the evenings, take this scripture to practice and say, before I go to sleep, and you say that simple prayer, now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Instead, it's the, now I lay me down to sleep. And I envisualize all that I get to keep. I begin to dream and visualize and see the unfolding with faith and hope coming together. I imagine my success. I imagine the unfolding of my health and wellness, my prosperity, my blessing, my goodness, all the things that are intended for us. For it is God's desire for you to prosper. It is God's intention, as we read in the book of Jeremiah, that God has plans and wants to initiate your prosperity and blessing. So we begin at night as this example from Song of Solomon to sort of lay down in the bed and just begin to imagine. And to imagine as if. Because in her, this passage, she, night after night on my bed, I sought in mind the one I love. And then awakening, she rises and going out as if, acting as if, the one I love is there and I'm looking for him. It's not a figment of my imagination. He's out there. And so I'm going through the streets of the city and I'm inquired, have you seen him? Have you seen him? What? This figment of your imagination? This great? No. The reality that there's someone a soul's desire, a soul's love. Others may say, well, oh, I can't see what you're imagining. I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Passage unfolds. The woman writes in this beautiful song, uh, passage, uh, I scarcely passed the person when I found that which I was imagining, visualizing, dreaming, 
my soul was searching for, that I was going about looking for. I found him and I would not let it go because I found it in the essence of the spirit of saying, it is here, it is now, it is mine, and I hold on to him. I grab onto him and I take him home to mama's house and I take him to the place where the bedchamber where I was born, where described in this way, where my mother uh, cons consummated the marriage. In other words, the symbolism here is hold on to that vision. Hold on to that imagination. Hold on to it in a way that says, I know that I know that I know. I expect it to unfold. I hold on to it so much that I want to consummate the marriage of faith and hope coming together, boom, and igniting my imagination in a powerful way that transforms my life. My spiritual journey is now ignited with a power as I begin to think from this perspective, not thinking of the perspective. Big difference here because faith in action says, I think from the aspect. I am Italy now. I am there on vacation right now and I'm experiencing this wonderful wine. Not too much, but just a little wine. And I'm experiencing all this Italian food and I'm enjoying all this pasta, manja, manja, right? And you're living from that experience and that's how you plan and live from because your Holy Spirit anointed imagination is at work within you. I invite you to make sure you're part of Carla Gamper's workshop. Because what we're talking about here is going to be elaborated on as you expand the power of living in the world of a dynamic, ignited, fire-filled, passionate imagination. that says, I know that I know. I expect with fullness. And it's alive within me. Now, wait a minute. We left the couple at the altar, didn't we? we? They had said yes. Faith said yes. Hope said yes. Oh, now faith and hope, I now pronounce you joined together. Let everyone here and everywhere respect and honor this union for all time. You may kiss your life partner. Mazel tov. Mazel tov. Do you ever been to a Jewish wedding? You know? And they all yell Mazel Tov at the time when the groom stomps on the glass and shatters the glass. What a waste. I thought, what? now you wonder why you have champagne glasses for eight and now you only have seven. You know, what are you doing? Wasting a good glass. Oh, there's a deeper meaning. Why do they shatter the glass at the wedding? Because it's symbolic of the creative power of God at work. In that moment of the universe expansion and explosion of the divines imagining all things possible, psh, the universe is shattered open in bits and pieces. Shards of light go everywhere in the Jewish uh, midrash of describing what creation is all about. It's shattered everywhere. And creation goes in immense ways and new directions. And it is the explosion of faith that says, I know, and hope, this is I expect, that great things are created through this couple. So at the wedding, the groom stumps on the glass, shatters it symbolically saying, together we as a couple, united in this wonderful power and strength of a holy union, of a matrimony experience, we go forth now to be creative. And all things that we too imagine as a couple are possible. And so the congregation yells, Mazel Tov, Mazel Tov. Today, I invite you to experience the power of ignited imagination. Not just daydreaming, it's not a someday, but to live and act and move from the perspective that says, and so it is. We say that a lot. Some people say, why do you say, and so it is so much? The word amen is the same as, and so it is. What does amen mean? It means it's done, it's finished, and so it is. So it is, and that's our faith at work. So our imagination needs to be coupled with that same kind of energy that says, I imagine my healing. I feel it, and I live from that perspective, and so it is. I imagine my prosperity and my blessing. I feel it, and I walk in that prosperity, knowing that God is unfolding goodness for me, and so it is. And I know that that job I'm looking for, that wonderful journey of, of a great vacation, or whatever it may be that I'm imagining, envisioning, that new house that I'm I'm claiming, I say, and so it is. 
because it is as we ignite faith, hope, and the power of imagination. Amen.